Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas on Twitter. Joined by Teddy Theodore Covers at Teddy underscore Covers. <laughs> Sorry, I love that Marco calls you that. Uh -huh. Brian Leonard at B Leonard Sports. Make sure you guys are giving them a follow on Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, we have a question from Twitter today, guys. Matt Flag asks, "What's one way to confirm you're on the right slash sharp side of a game?" I understand bad bets can win, good bets can lose, but what's the barometer for figuring out? If you're backing the sharp side, Teddy, I'll go to you first. Well, I mean, if you want to simply look at sports books, you know, the Pinnies and the Westgates of the world, Pinnacle, Sportsbook, Westgate, uh, there are plenty more uh, like them that cater to sharp bettors. You can see what the line is there, what the juice is at Pinnacle in particular, where, to say which way the sharp money is leaning at this stage. And you can compare that to the Bavadas uh, of the world uh, or the station. William casinos, Hills, yeah. yeah. William Hills, exactly. Uh, that tend to cater to recreational players and not attract sharp action, or not welcome sharp action in the same way. So you can look at this disparity between those two books and or those two types of books and see on many games, there's a sharp, there's a side where the sharp money is coming in and there's a, 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 a side where it isn't, uh, obviously, but not for every game. Right. So, for example, Teddy, do you guys ever uh, look at, I get this question all the time about percentages. Oh, well, there's 80% of the public on this, so the 20% must be the sharp side. Please debunk that theory, Brian. I don't look at it at all because you don't know who is placing the bets. You don't know what numbers they're placing the bets at, and you don't know how much money they're placing on those games. Um, as for com look, coming down to uh, sharp sides and, and uh, square sides, it all depends on what the number is. I mean, you, you've got a, a game where the number is three and people are buying in on the three. They take it all the way up to four, take it to four and a half. Well, that's no longer the sharp side. It was the sharp number. Now, there's games where, and we see this all the time, when you have like totals that move 10 points or whatever, there could be sharp sides on both sides of the game. Um, over 47 is the sharp side. It gets up to 51 and a half, and then plus the, the, the under 51 and a half is the sharp side. So Teddy's right. You want to take a look at where, where the uh, public books are looking at as opposed to the Chris's, the Pinnacles, the Westgate, South Point. Um, those are the places that are, to me, tougher to beat. Those are the same sides I want to be on. I want to be on those sides. Uh, but, but it's a numbers thing. It's, it's not a side thing. And, you know, I know Teddy puts out a sharp... Uh, sharp square side on on Twitter every week. Well, that's just that's just an opinion. Yeah, it's an that's opinion. A, yeah. But you could get four or five different guys all giving you different based on when they're looking at it and what they're looking at it. So I, it doesn't matter to me. I don't I don't need to be on the sharp side if I'm laying six on a game that they bet a three. Mm -hmm. Okay, Teddy. One last question, just in that same realm. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about this before. Sometimes what appears to be the sharp side sometimes is a fake move. Can you tell our viewers about that? Uh, I, had a, I was circling it when Brian was oh. talking. So I'm like, remember, lots of early line moves are head fakes, flat out head fakes. It takes a lot less money to move a line on Sunday night or Monday or Tuesday than it will on Saturday or Sunday. So if you're a, a syndicate that wants to get, you know, 100 dimes down on this game and you can do a head fake and put a couple of dimes down on Sunday and Monday and then bet a bunch more back the other way, uh, right before kickoff, because you've taken, you know, the line started steaming the one way. It happens all the time. Uh, what you think is a sharp move on, on Monday is not a sharp move on Friday, just as Brian was talking about. You're it. absolutely right. And the wise guys, as to say, the, the wise guys, like there's one uniform, like this is what all the wise guys are doing. It's not that way. It's a series of individual bettors or individual betting groups that are making these decisions. There's not like there's some wise guy chat room that they're all uh, That <laughs> wise guy chat room, I love it. Well, for example, the other day I go down the Westgate. I want to bet um, aside for week one. Mm -hmm. Talk to John Murray, Kel, I'll give you two dimes. Okay, no problem. He goes, why do you want to bet that? I tell him, he bets it at another place, right? <laughs> and I go, he goes, okay, great information. Guess what? Now somebody on the screen sees, hey, they moved it to seven. Now it's moved to six and a half, went all the way down to six. Now it's back to seven a week and a half later. But I think what ended up happening is a couple people saw it. I shared the information with a couple people, and the screen thus moved, steaming the play. And then other people who are looking, as, as soon as the screen starts turning at some key books, people who are looking for that particular number, I better grab it here, I better yes. grab it now, and then they grab it, and then other people are saying, oh, shit, it's down to six, that's too low, let's bet it back to this, look at this, a bargain, six, six Exactly, and, and actually, and I'm mad at myself because I did miss a six because I was like, oh, I could have came back on that and maybe had a nice middle if the game lands on seven. But it is funny that someone like me, who's not betting too much, two dimes, 
shouldn't move a line that much, but you tell a certain bookmaker, hey, I've heard this rumor. Next thing you know, things start to steamroll. So as you mentioned with the head fake, it wasn't a head fake. I'm really happy to have a seven and a half in my pocket for week one. That being said, I I'm not one of these big betting syndicates. <laughs> well, Teddy talked about the head fakes, and that used to be a bigger problem than I think is now, because before, everybody waited until the line was established. Now people are just dying to get into those early openers that bet online or whatever where they're taking a nickel. So, I mean, Cheeto used to be with us, and Cheeto used to do that. He used to pick off 10 games on, on that Sunday night with the nickels. Most, most of the big syndicates don't worry about a nickel. They don't care about a nickel. But there's so many guys like ourselves and, te and, uh, and Cheetah who 500 bucks is, hey, 500 bucks is 500 bucks. Sure. So if you can get the best line at 500 bucks, you're going to take it. So um, the head fakes, it takes more for the, those, uh, the bigger bettors to bet a head fake now as opposed to before. So um, to me, the sharpest line is in the last hour of an NFL game because the lines makers know what they need and the big betters can say, okay, this is what I want. And then the lines maker says, I'll take whatever you're going to bet me. So you're not going to come in with a $200,000 bet an hour before the NFL game, as opposed to a Sunday night, $500. So it's the last, and, and a lot of sports book managers have told me, the last move is the right move. The problem is when you're betting that last move, we're betting it for a lot less than those guys are. And we're probably getting a worse number. All right, great stuff, guys. Make sure to like and share our videos. Want to share some of your thoughts, give us some feedback, suggest a video, leave us a comment, and be eligible to win a free week of service.